First of all, it's, uh, it's lovely to be in Hyderabad. I grew up here. I, I have a home here. My parents live here. I come here all the time, so it's, uh, it's truly, truly wonderful to be back here. Met a few friends out here. Uh, and as far as Suman, uh, I'm still a chaddi, but if you tear this off, chaddi will Okay. So I want to talk a few things about uh, uh, startups and how I've tried to grow them. Uh, in terms of you know credentials for that, I just I'm, I've failed more often than I've succeeded. I have about 55, 60 investments. Uh, about 20 of them, 20, 25 of them are direct. Uh, which I've done myself, but 35 of them are what I've done through my fund, seed fund. My investments, through my, and I'm setting up two more funds this year, my investments through seed fund are companies like uh, Redbus, Carvale, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, My Dentist, Chumbak, if you've heard of them, a uh, few others. And my personal investments include Webdonia, uh, and uh, Pinstorm and uh, Dulali and so on, a few others. So we've done pretty okay. I mean, I, in, among my quote unquote whatever, achievements or whatever in, in startups is that I think the highest ever return for an Indian investor was the sale of Red Bus. It's still a record till now. Uh, I mean, we've been, both the funds in Seed Fund have been, uh, have won India's best fund because we had the highest returns ever to our investors, right? It happened by accident, but I'll tell you what we learned during the course of that accident. Yeah. A lot of my life I spent actually in advertising, uh, I, even though I started my life as, uh, as a door-to-door -door salesman. My territory was Banjara Hills, Jubilee Hills. I used to sell vacuum cleaners here and back in those days, so I still knew some streets very well. I know a lot of the houses that rejected me. Uh, the, uh, in those days, I mean, a lot, till about 10 years ago, my mantra in advertising that I used to tell my clients was always, look, you want to become bigger, you need to spend more. Spend on advertising, spend on marketing, and see how you grow. And actually, the strange thing is many of them still believe that. And most advertising still works that way. And many of you may also believe, yeah, of course, Mahesh, what are you saying? I need money to grow because I need money to market, I need money to advertise, then I'll grow. It's the commonly accepted mantra. But there's something that I started noticing about 10 years ago that changed my view about a lot of things in life, especially on how to grow business, how to start up and how to scale up. And I'll talk about those. I'll probably talk about five, six things. At any point, please stop me, ask questions, no problem. And at the end, it, you'll still have questions. I'm very happy to take them. So the first thing that I was taught in advertising was that I started actually in Hyderabad about 30 odd years, 32, 33 years ago, was that, you know, competition is on the rise. And you also believe that competition was on the rise. They live in a very competitive economy. If you follow through on the thought of that, what does it mean? Let's say that, you know, uh, you're in some pharmaceutical business. You know, if you're all fighting very, very hard, then what will happen is all the large companies become bunched up close together in terms of market share. And sure enough, you know, the biggest pharma company in the world probably has 9% market share, and second one is 8% market share, and third one is maybe eight, you know, 7.6% market share, and so on and so forth. If you look at the same thing in cars, gasoline-powered cars, that's still true. So Toyota Group globally, you can Pepsi are neck and neck, and then Sprite and 7up, and you know, they're all neck and neck, and they're all... But something interesting and very different started happening about five, seven, ten years ago in this digital world. Today, the world's largest women's fashion brand is Zara, at $21 billion in sales, 130,000 crore rupees in sales. In fact, the Zara in Palladium in Bombay, one store does 100 crores a year, one store in Bombay. And the number, two, I mean, and Zara is 10 times larger than Calvin Klein, which is at $2 billion. Now, let's come from carbonated soft drinks to a more modern equivalent, which is energy drinks. While they're all neck and neck out there in energy drinks, Red Bull has 48% market share. And Coke's energy drink monster and Pepsi's energy drink together don't even have 11%. That means Red Bull is larger than Coke plus Pepsi into four. When you come to cars, it's more interesting. We talked about how, how Toyota and Volkswagen Group are neck and neck, but you take the modern equivalent of cars. Take el electric cars, and spe especially the niche of luxury electric cars. Tesla has a 99% or 99.2% market share. The number two is BMW i with a 0.6% market share. Right? It's getting interesting. Let's look at a sector like coffee shops. 
Starbucks has a 70% market share of organized coffee shop business globally. Right? Really interesting. Now let's come to the digital world when you see it's even more so. Twitter has a 100% market share in microblogging. There is no competition to Twitter. But apparently we are supposed to have competition. Right? Where is that gone? Gmail has a lion's share of free email. It's four or five times larger than Hotmail and Yahoo Mail put together. Google search has a 92% global market share. Do you know the number two search engine globally? Bing, do you know the number three? You don't know. YouTube has 90% market share in video platforms. Can you name the number two video platform globally? I bet you can't. WhatsApp has 70% market share. WeChat is 17%. Can you name the number three, number four? So it's strange that we come from a world where you can name top 10 pharmaceutical companies in India. In fact, even the number 10 is probably worth 1,000 crore rupees. Or it is the founder of the number 10 is worth 1,000 crore rupees. But you can't name the number three search engine in the world. You can't name the number two video platform in the world. You can't name the number three email in the world. Right? Social networks. Facebook has 85% market share or 80% or something. Maybe Google Plus is number two. Who's number three? Right? And case after case after case. Dating, Tinder. Case after case after case. We're coming from a world where typically earlier the competition would be 20%, 18%, 16%, 12%. That's how market shares would go. To a world where the leader gets 85%. Number two gets 8.5%. Number three gets 0.85%. Or you can call it 90%, 9%, and 0.9%. Game over. There's a difference of 10x, or there can be a difference of 10x, between number one and number two, between number two and number three. It's a logarithmic scale. It's not a linear scale. That's what's scary and that's what's exciting. When I sold Red Bus, we had 88% market share. When we sold Carvalho, we had 90% market share. Today, Chumbak has 70% plus market share. My dentist, my company, has 65% plus market share and growing. So the incredible thing is, if somebody tells you competition is growing, it's actually not true. Dominance is growing, or the opportunity for dominance is growing. Right? So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, the other guys have done e-com, I'll do a third e-com app, a broad e-com app, I know you're going to die. I'm doing the third housing app. I know you're going to die. I'm doing the third or fourth. I can only look at first or second. If you're third, it doesn't matter. You don't exist. You shouldn't exist. This is crazy, and this is really difficult for a country like India, where historically, and let's not be embarrassed about it, the truth is our entire company, our country, has been built on copy-paste. We looked out, copied, paste, copy, paste, Tata, copy, paste, Kirloskar, copy, paste, Birla, copy, paste. Every single thing we did was copy, paste. Bahar kya chal raha hai, dekho aake chep do idhar. We tried doing that among our internet companies. Every single copy, paste internet company has died or will die. A Flipkart will die, a Snapdeal will die. Already all the food tech companies have died. Every copy, paste company will die, without a doubt. Sure, VCs have funded them. I don't think they're very smart. Those VCs will also die. Copy-paste VCs will also die. Right? So the key thing out here is to figure out, if you are doing a copy-paste, you're going to die. It starts with that. It's very difficult because copy-paste is in our blood. Right? So the key point is, when you're out there choosing your business, at the startup stage itself, before the thought of scale-up comes in, what is it you're doing? Pick a niche and become the 80-90% leader in that niche. You have that opportunity. Right? It's an enormous opportunity. The second thing is, in some ways, really good news. So each of these brands we talked about is mega, mega monolithic global brands, whether it's a Red Bull or a Tesla or a Google or a Gmail and so on and so forth. Extraordinary brands, right? But here's the incredible thing. To grow, they all have spent the grand sum of zero on advertising. Have you ever seen a Google ad? Have you ever seen a Tesla ad? Have you ever seen a Red Bull ad? Have you ever seen ads for any of the companies we talked about? WhatsApp? Have you ever seen an ad for Twitter? Have you ever seen an ad for Starbucks? No. 
We are in an economy where the leaders in each of these sectors never advertise. Only the losers advertise. Every time you open a newspaper, every guy who's advertising is likely a loser. The winners don't advertise anymore. This is what I realized. And I'm saying this as an advertising guy who owns actually a brand management company, among other things. But it's true. Which leading brand? Think about it. I mean, and this is not just true overseas, not just true in high elite levels. One of the clients that my, my uh, firm has worked with, the advertising firm, is the Aam Admi Party. Two years ago, they got Delhi, where the BJP spent 100 crores, AAP spent zero, and we won 67 seats out of 70. Talk about dominance. The first tool is the dominance of dominance. You will see that happen. And truly, the AAP with zero was more a dominant force, far more powerful than the BJP with 100 crores then. Things may have changed now. But this is how it works across demographics. Whether it's a cycle rickshaw wala, whether it's India, whether it's a you know, slum, or whether it's the most exalted places, the most exalted homes. Across demographics, across psychographics, across ge geographics. The first rule was again about the dominance of dominance. The second rule was basically if you need to advertise, you need to die. Going back in, so what made these companies succeed? I wanted to do that because obviously I'm an investor in these companies. Right? And sure enough, like funny from Redbus would come and say, Mahesh, paisa de yaar. And I sat back and thought, none of the winners have advertised. If I want to have a winner, I should not advertise. So then what should I do? How do I grow my business? And you look at each of these businesses, every one of these businesses has grown by word of mouth. You never saw an ad for Zara, somebody told you about it. You never saw an ad for WhatsApp, somebody nagged you to get onto it. You never saw an ad for Tesla, somebody told you about it. Journalists actually paid Red Bull to cover the guy jumping from space. Imagine that. Journalists paid a client. Right? The secret that I figured from all of this is each of these companies is doing something remark-worthy. In its true sense of the word, remark-worthy, worthy of remark. And each of these companies, so it might be as simple as we all remember the days of Hotmail, we all had 25 MB and 50 MB accounts. And we would be really angry if somebody sent us a 1 MB email saying, Salah, you have to delete karna padega, download karke. Right? You remember those days? Till somebody at Google said, Are chod, it's against human nature to ask to expect humans to delete. Let's just offer people one GB. Within three months, all of you had moved to Google, to Gmail. All of you. Game over. And they've held on to that sense. Simple human insight. That was remark worthy. Are one GB Milan Bias. Remark worthiness. Every one of these was built on remark worthiness. Something made you want to buy a Red Bull. Imagine that. Coke spends hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars, trying to get you to buy a 330 ml soft drink which sells for 20 rupees. And Red Bull spends nothing to make you buy a 200 ml soft drink that costs 95 rupees. Every one of these super dominant companies is also the most profitable. For obvious reasons. You've never seen an Uber ad, you'll see an Ola ad. The losers will advertise, the winners don't. In any segment, you can see this again and again. Right? And the winners will get super profits, super market share, super margins. Because they have done something which is worthy of being remark worthy. What then is at the root of this remark worthiness? It's just constant insight, constant understanding, and to be able to say, I, I did something, I learned from my audience, I got some insight, and I built this product, and I put it out there. Right? We can get to, this is probably not the session to do, but we can talk about inciting. How do, you, how do you create these insights? How do you get these insights? In fact, a lot of what I do with my companies and my clients is exactly this, saying, look, if you advertise, it's not going to make a damn bit of a difference. Sure. You know, if you really expect me to believe Shah Rukh Khan drives an I-10, and I don't, and nobody else does, we can pay him five crores. But if you have a brain, let's talk. Right? And the point is, the new era of entrepreneurs is beginning to understand that. The old era of people who understood that FMCG mein paisa dalo, paisa peko, tamasha, it's gone. Paisa nahi peko, tamasha tab hoga. 
right? So this entire level of how do you start up, how do you scale up, it starts from the point of view of how do you create a remark-worthy product. And the next point is really interesting, how do you keep it remark-worthy? Right? This is again a vast difference from the way we've been taught. If you look at the classics that we were taught to follow, Hindustan, Diva, Procter & Gamble, supposed to be the masters of brand. They both lost it. Today, neither Unilever nor Procter & Gamble nor any of their brands are in the top 100 brands in the world. None of them. Even in India, out of nowhere, Baba Ramdev has overtaken Procter & Gamble. He's twice the size of PNG. Right? He's one third the size of, half the size of HL, HUL already with no particular advertising spend. He figured something out. We can talk about that later. But at the root of this is something interesting. It's, it's about the idea of what do I do next. So let's say I do one thing which is remark worthy. What do I do next? And that's an interesting point. If it was Unilever, I'd say I launch one soap. Then boss, I'll launch another soap. And then launch another soap. And launch another soap. And then I want a line extension. I'll launch a shampoo. Even though shampoo somebody else owns. Here I had 20% market share, I'll do 3% market share, I'll launch another shampoo, another shampoo. Then I'll do toothpaste. Somebody else owns it, but I'll go, I'll get 1% market share, launch there. Because boss, I'm in the personal care products category. I think in this category. The truth in life is there is no bloody category. Baba Ramdev has shown us, with one brand, Patanjali, you buy atta, you buy tail, you buy toothpaste, you buy dant manjan, you buy on one brand. Nobody thinks in categories. Nobody. It's a complete false, falsity to believe anybody does. And also see how modern companies behave. Look at a Google and look at an Apple. An Apple started with a desktop, won it. And then an IBM PC came in and Apple said, Chodo, nikalta hoa se. I'll do laptops. Won it. Everybody else came and said, Chodo, nikalta hoa se. Then did music players. Is there any connection with the music player? Because in traditional band thinking, music player is not in the category of PC. They want music players. Till the Chinese imports came, they said, Chodo. They went in mobile phones. No connection between mobile phones, music players, laptops. They want mobile phones. And again, this is an interesting thing, right? We'll do a side light. The remark were the Apple mobile phones. They're iPhone 1, iPhone 2, iPhone 3, and iPhone 4. iPhone 1 had a one kilometer line of people waiting for it. 2 had a two kilometer line waiting for it. 3 had a three kilometer line of people waiting for it. But iPhone 4 was a turning point. It was the first almost parity phone. Some people waiting for it. iPhone 5 was sub-parity. So Apple started advertising. iPhone 6 is sub-sub-sub-parity. Almost nobody uses it. So they have EMI, every damn thing happening, needles not moving. Apple itself is proof that if you have a remark-worthy product, you don't need to advertise. If you have a shit product, you need to advertise. Right? In each of these cases. So Apple did the phone. Now figure it's not doing that. So it's going to watch. And after it's going to the car, there's no connection between a car and a watch and a phone and a music player. And this is how the world's most valuable company behaves. The world's second most valuable company, Google. They started with search. Then they went to email. No connection with search. Not in the same category. They went to email to maps. They won maps. No connection with anything else. From maps, they said, let's do social networks. They went to social networks and they lost. They said, no, no, no. They went to mobile operating systems, no connection, and they won that. Android has 90% market share, never advertised. And from there, they're now going to self-driving cars, where they have a 90% market share. They're going to balloons, there's many guys in the world. They're going to the moon. There's no connection between any of these. You want to grow as a company, the next seed you have to throw is not close to you and say, boss, I'm here, my next line extension is no. You take your seed, throw it far away and say, there I'll get 90% market share. From there, there I'll get 90% market share. Consumers don't want you to be close to each other. They're very happy to get you to do something new and different. If only you have the guts to follow up. That's how the world's largest brands behave. And we are saying, boss, I'm a, I define myself as a category. You don't need to define yourself by a category. A lot of this startup scale up only rests and rests on the decisions of founders to do something that is remark worthy on a consistent and on a reliable time frame, which basically means that you have to be out there inventing something all the time. You are the founder, or you are the staff, right? You have, and you put it out there, even if it's got nothing to do with what you've done before. Imagine, there will be an Apple car. There will be, there is an Apple watch. And Apple was just a PC brand. Don't think in categories. 
right? I will talk through again in terms of what it takes to reach sustainability. My own rule on the financial front is very straightforward. When I fund a company, I fund a company and say, you know, I'll give you maybe two years worth of capital. At the end of that, I need you to break even. For a very simple reason, even though nobody expects that anymore. Because I don't know if the next round will come or not. Here's my experience. I started investing in 1999 as an investor. In 2001, the world collapsed. And all the guys who said, boss, I'll give you money next round, two years later, will come. All those companies died because two years later, the money didn't come. I raised my first fund in 2006. The world collapsed in 2008. I raised my second fund in 2009-10. The world collapsed in 2012 with the Greek crisis. I'm raising my fund now. Watch out for 2018. It'll be a bad year. <laughs> right? Simply because if you sit back and say, Chalo, tukka maar diya, and grow and somebody else will fund you later, it's just not going to work. That somebody else may never come. You must be able to have a plan B that at all times, within that 18-month window, at an ability for switch, you can turn it to break even. If good money comes, fine. You grow. But at the ability to switch, you can... The business plans I see have no thought about break-even. Valuation lagayenge. You can't eat valuation. You can only eat revenues. You can't eat market cap. You can only eat profits. Right? The other thing is the entire falsity, in many ways, us VCs are the problem, of saying that, boss, in saal, char saal may exit. Look at the Bombay Stock Exchange here. The world's largest stock exchange. 5,700 companies listed in it. Typically, it takes a company 12 to 18 years to get listed. What exits are you talking about in three or four years' time? All the great companies, which of them have been in four, four years? Even a Google took 11 years to list. If you're sitting here following the drum of an investor who says, char saal mein niklo, it's not going to happen. You can do what you want. Look at India's bellwether companies. Nokri took 11 years to list. Just style, sorry, make my trip took 12 years. Just style took 17 years to list. And if you're there with a three or four year horizon, you're not going to make it. It's going to take time. In India, it's going to take even more time. You will make mistakes, you will roll. You may remember newer investments, Durali, it's taken nine years for us. In the first seven years, we took, went from zero to one crore in revenue. In the eighth year, we went from one to ten crores. In the ninth year, we're now going from ten to twenty crores in revenue. It takes time. And I know that will be one day a 500 or 1,000 crore company, maybe three, four years from now. But it's taken time. It'll take time. So if you don't have the patience, you don't have the ability to hold out for a long period of time, you're in the wrong game. Everything everybody else says, hump and dump, pump and dump, get in, get out, you can't do that in business. You've got to go in there, put your head down and stay. It'll take 10 years, at least. Likely it'll take 12 to 15 years for whatever it is you're doing, for you to achieve dominance, that, that scale, that size. Every one of these brands we talked about took that long in some way or the other to achieve that dominance. And that'll come from being remark worthy every step of the way, up and down. You will be remark worthy in saying no to capital because you should in some cases say no to capital. Somebody says, G give you money, give me five, five times the money in three years. Don't touch it because you can't give five times the money in three years. You can't even give three times the money in five years time. You can't. It's not possible. Do the math. It's just not possible. And what happens when you sign up for that money? When you take the money, you're dead when the five years comes because they throw you out, they sell your company, you lose the company. In every one of these cases, all, all these companies that have gone under, that have been acquired, the founder lost the company. The founder lost the company. How is that good for you? What's the point in losing the company at the end of six years' hard work and taking five crores or ten crores to talk about it? What's the point? Don't you want to build something that's impactful, that really lasts for generations, that makes a big difference to you and to the way you're perceived? As a, or are you just a serial investor? Banaya becha, banaya becha, banaya becha. Do you remember any serial investor in the world? You don't. Do you remember any serial entrepreneur in the world? You don't. The only entrepreneurs you remember are the guys who took a lifetime to build companies. Whether it was Richard Branson, whether it was, you know, uh, Azim Premji, whether it was Narayan Murthy, whether it's Bill Gates, whether, they took a lifetime, 20, 30 years to build a company. It's going to take you that long. There is no fast money, there's no easy flip.